Howdy everyone, welcome to another episode of Devlogs. This week, I got into creating a staple feature you see in many, if not most, video games. What I am talking about is volume sliders. I referenced the video you see here, which I will link in the description. The reason I wanted this in my game was not for the usual reason you'd expect. Usually a volume slider is for when you're playing a game and you decide, huh, I don't like this, it's too loud. Or maybe vice versa, and instead you say, this is way too quiet. And so there is a volume slider in your settings menu that lets you adjust the levels for a specific part of your soundscape, the sound effects, the music, dialogue, or the master volume. After messing with the sliders until satisfied, the player moves on and is happy throughout the rest of the game. However, Clipmaster's objective changes this. Part of how a puzzle is completed is by how you interact with the volume slider and your environment. This is how the slider differentiates itself from your typical use case for sliders in other video games. The puzzle itself is for configuring the proper acoustics in a set environment, where the levels are playing within the recommended healthy listening range. Aside from letting the player mess with their position in the room, and the position or orientation of the object emitting music, the volume slider would be a constant factor they could interact with. Think of it as your gain knob, or a slider on a mixer, except I prevent the player from cranking the volume up to a point where they blow their ears out. This would be cool for simulating the pretty obvious fact that on all music players, you have volume control, which I also want players to have. What matters is that, should the player decide to adjust the volume, they should be making sure the music is not too loud or quiet and is playing in adequate levels. When they feel they have done so, there will be a submit button they can press. Upon pressing it, my goal is for the submit button to run a function that references the levels our listener is hearing, then give them a rating based on the value. I am currently troubleshooting that because of my inexperience with the GUI component in Unity. I had started using it a lot for this project, but the problem I encountered was that I do not know how to reference the levels from our master audio bus on Wise, then display those levels on a GUI in Unity. Depending on what the levels are, I would also like to give the player a rating, based on what levels they submitted. If you're in between 70 to 75 decibels, that's 3 stars, 60 to 80 is 2 stars, then anything outside of that gives no stars based on levels. The final star is a performance-based variable that I haven't decided on. I was thinking of maybe completing the level within a set amount of time, but I'd like to see if I could think of something else. If you have any ideas, feel free to drop a comment. I presented this game a final time to my peers, and next week will be exam week, as well as the last week of the semester. My professor will playtest the game, and my goal is to have the submit button system working, so that there's a purpose in what the player is doing by having a rating system. Let's move on to what I did to this project though, which compared to last time was a lot of aesthetic based touch-ups. However, there is also a wise feat I did that was inspired by a blog. The blog covered making an object react proportionally, based on the value of your wise meter. This is conceptually identical to the real-time parameter control we used for changing the player's hand color. The big difference is that we aren't changing colors this time, rather the size of a 3D object in Unity. Here is the script, and as always, I'll link the blog below for people who like the results of what I show. One of the big reasons I chose to do this is because of external and internal triggers. For anyone familiar with the hook model, or potentially remembering me talking about it in an earlier video, triggers are the first thing that lure players into a dopamine loop when they play games. After people had playtested and I did another presentation on Clipmaster, I thought back on my triggers and began thinking about a word brought up in a research paper I had read. The word is edutainment, which in short breaks down the balance between education and entertainment in a game. This came from a Howard Jones article I read, which I will link. Anyways, I realized my game was very focused on education and lacked entertainment. This was obvious to me, but it felt worth pointing out and mentioning to others who did not know where I was with the game, and what my plans were moving forward. When people had playtested, two things stuck out to me like a sore thumb. The controls were not very straightforward and all the player could do was move around and pick up or throw a radio that played music. Of course, how they moved around or interact with the radio affects the acoustics of the environment, but this is a feature people would passively experience when playing any other game. So it wasn't really worth acknowledging in the way I had anticipated. If people were to care more about the audio, the objective needed to be made more clear, so that's when I decided to, well, make it more clear. 
I decided to focus on three things this week. One was following that blog and making a moving meter as another form of external trigger. Before I elaborate on external triggers, let me talk about the objective. I typed out the objective and some instructions onto a different wall. It tells you about how audio experts recommend people listen to music between 70 to 75 decibels, and I label this as the golden standard. I then challenge the player with configuring an environment that plays music at these levels. When they feel they have done so, they click the submit button and will receive a rating. With these instructions, the player has an objective and receives feedback based on their performance. Now this leads me back to external triggers. Think of an external trigger as an email or a text message on your phone. Each of these ding or appear as a notification, grabbing your attention and prompting you to pull up the message. In Clip Master, we have two external triggers that drive a player's actions. You have their color changing hands, which should indicate when the music's levels are either shabby or not too shabby. You then have a meter providing an alternate visual interpretation of your levels, though both external triggers reference the same wise meter. What both of these triggers do is prompt the player to either want to click the submit button or to change their levels before doing so because they feel what's being shown to them may indicate that changes should be made. Now, I want to talk about the internal trigger, which is the habit players have that require no external cue. Keep in mind that while you're playing this game, your ear is getting trained to recognize when the levels to an environment are improper. When playing this for the first time, it may be unclear what proper levels sound like, and so we have the external triggers I mentioned for steering the player towards puzzle completion. However, as the player continues playing, the triggers associated with indicating right from wrong become less needed. The player begins knowing what healthy listening levels sound like, and so an internal trigger is developed because they do not need external ones to determine whether or not they have properly configured an environment that achieves the target decibel range. So we now have given the player better aid in understanding and achieving the objective. Whether or not they're a novice or expert in audio, there is room to refine or develop one's listening skills, all while having fun in a puzzle-like game. If we were to imagine what future levels looked like, and how the player's progression would remain interesting, I would tell you to visualize more complex levels each time the player completed a level. Instead of this basic dorm-like setting, future levels would become more complicated. Given the player knows how the game works now, and has completed the simple tutorial level, it would hopefully be easy to play around in a more complex environment, like a cathedral, or a theater, maybe a cafeteria, maybe a retired volcano, I don't know. That actually pulls me back to something you may have seen, which is the controls interface shown in the tutorial level. When playtesting, I realized that many buttons on the VR controllers were not getting used, though players would make assumptions or still be confused on how the game worked after receiving instructions from me. I admittedly was not the best at instructing the player how an unfinished game works, but this also just meant that I needed a controls visual that eliminated the need for me to explain the controls. It's not like I was going to be there every time they played the game. Basically, I got a lot of experience messing with the GUI component and making text or image based things. The last thing I want to cover is the word I mentioned earlier, edutainment. Even with the updated iteration of the game and my vision for future levels, this game would arguably still be boring. Like sure, you can play in a sandbox-ish environment and all your actions have audible consequences that determine how well you perform, but that is a constant thing that, even as it progressively gets harder, can still become boring. I've talked about adding more features that I had initially planned to do, like adding or removing furniture, or changing the textures of walls or floors, all of which should have an acoustical impact on the level, but this is still not a game changer. We want the players to come back to this game. We want them to be eternally motivated to play, and so I had two things I thought of. For one, I thought about Portal, the first one. You have a portal gun, it shoots two different colors of portals that create a link and unique way of navigating a level. This is a constant for the rest of the game, something you see in every puzzle, though there are also some other elements that get thrown in and make gameplay unique. What I wanted to point out was the variable that elicits a greater sense of drive in the player, which is the story. You have GLaDOS, the antagonist, talking to you throughout the levels, and it's obvious you're a test subject of some sort. You are shown how many levels there are in the experiment and are left to wonder what happens when I reach the end. This is the power of a good plot. It is something that prompts you to want to play the whole game. 
I say that, and you probably could guess where I'm going with this, which is that my game has no story, no plot whatsoever, and you are completing puzzles for what feels like no reason. Someone who played the demo level had speculated how they feel like they're undergoing some sort of shady experiment and it's weird how there's looming text on the wall instructing them on what to do. It immediately made me want to incorporate some sort of crazy underlying plot that developed throughout levels. This is a good way of motivating the player to continue playing the game, but what happens when the story, the main game itself, is complete? The next and final thing I thought of was how this game is already a pretty sandboxious game. What if players had the ability to create their own custom environments and submit them to a public level repository accessible to everyone? This is a heavy goal, but simply a consideration I wanted you to ponder. Happy Wheels is a game that does this, and its potential skyrocketed endlessly because of the ability to create your own levels. If I implemented a custom level creator and sharer, players could replicate real places, and because of the Y specifications communicated to Unity, have an environment with pretty decent acoustics that would make for some really cool puzzle levels. Imagine configurations of cool places that people could make with ideal sound design, and what could be learnt in the process, all while having fun completing puzzles in these environments. This is of course a lot of work, but it's good to be able to think these things out. And if you've been following me, would love to hear your thoughts. This video was a bit heavier on the discussion side, but I want to end it off with some gameplay footage of the updated scene. Before the video plays, think of some of the keyword things I talked about. Edutainment and external or internal triggers. So again, next week is my last week for this semester, or for Crazy Your Terms exam week. I may or may not post devlogs next week, and as for the week after, well definitely not. My plan is to wrap up my progress with Clipmaster, and then put it on the back burner and move on to the WISE Unity demo project. Starting in June, I plan to start the WISE 201 certification after returning from family time, as well as resuming the Mention project and starting work on my senior project. You heard me right. It's time to begin doing stuff for the project this series' main focus was for, my senior project. Now that I have completed two Y certifications and obtained starter experience with Unity, I have laid out battle plans for what I need to tackle this summer and will be sharing my steps in future episodes. I look forward to talking more about it, but for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.